So this is the problem which we discuss uh, in the paper, which uh, kind of uh, demonstrates the advantage that n choose k has as a language that is easier for us to formulate problems in. This is the minimum vertex cover problem, and it says that give a, given a graph G, uh, find a set of vertices such that all of the edges of the graph uh, is shared by at least one vertex in the set. So the solution for the vertex cover problem is all the vertices in S. Uh, it is a trivial, trivial solution. So to kind of optimize this and to find the minimum vertex cover, we go with the insight that vertices are either in S or not. And then n choose k variables can directly represent the vertices. So we can, uh, we can choose uh, an n choose k set where the value of one indicates that the represented vertex is in S and zero indicates the absence of that particular vertex. So how do we uh, kind of introduce the soft constraints for this set? Because uh, we don't know how many vertices in, are in the cover, are in the minimum cover. So as you know, the trivial, uh, trivial solution just takes all the vertices. So we know the cover needs to have as few as possible vertices. So here is where we introduce our soft constraints. So as many as possible soft constraints will attempt to be satisfied. So to minimize the number of vertices that are in the, uh, in the vertex cover, we choose uh, for every vertex, we add this soft constraint that the absence of it is de desirable for all vertices. In the absence of it in the vertex cover is desirable. And then we create a cover, like not the minimum cover, just the cover. And for a cover, this is the, uh, this is the constraint that we have, this hard constraint, that for uh, any pair of vertices, U and V, uh, either, or one or both of them must be shared for each edge in the graph. So um, this is the summary of our approach. We have the hard constraint that each vertex, uh, each edge must have either one or both of the vertices that it shares, or uh, the absence of a vertex is uh, desirable as a soft constraint. Uh, so. Now, for the implementation of nchoosek, we have chosen Python, and this is this is how the implementation looks for the minimum vertex cover problem. Uh, here you can see that it is the generic flow is such that we set up a nchoosek environment, then we register uh, constants and ports that we have or we need, and then we just uh, we uh, pass as arguments the vertex sets and uh, uh, and the and the k values for each of the constraints. And then soft uh, constraint is also included in there. And then we sort the results, uh, uh, which gives us the vertex cover for the, uh, for the graph. Okay. So how does n choose k work behind the scenes, right? n choose k implementation converts all of the problems that we specify into quadratic constraint binary optimization format. Uh, D-Wave computers can run Cubo problems natively. IBM Qiskit can solve Cubo problems with the uh, quantum approximate optimization algorithm or QAOA. So why not just use Cubo, right? Uh, N2SK is can be easily converted to Cubo and as a matter of fact, it is. Uh, so why use n choose k at all? Why just why, why not just go with Cubo? So n choose k is easier to program, right? Uh, turning a problem into a Cubo typically involves algebra. So Cubo problems, uh, for those of you who know, uh, consists of uh, uh, summation of uh, uh, one or two binary uh, pairs of binary variables multiplied by a constant and uh, so turning a problem into a cubo problem typically involves algebra and n choose k is also easier for humans to interpret as a set of constraints. So let's see an example, uh, how cubo can be difficult, right? So this is the XOR equation uh, with uh, cubo and then we'll compare it to n choose k. For doing the algebra for this equation, we need an ancillary uh, variable d uh, 
the equation as you see is quite complex uh, and it is not very intuitive in the uh, in the coefficients it chooses for the uh, variables for those of you who know set and truss section problems maybe this seems easier so compared to n choose k this is all it is uh, in abc uh, either uh, none of them are true or exactly two of them are true it, it is easier to find, also much easier to read. So for easier to find, we just take the truth table for the XOR equation and uh, convert it into the constraint. And n choose k program automatically generates the cubo. So for the for the n choose k equation here, the cubo is exactly the same as the, the generated cubo is exactly the same as that on line three. So what are, uh, in the paper, there is another term that is discussed. What are symmetric constraints, right? Uh, it is difficult to come up with cubo formulation as we just saw before. It can also be difficult to come up with n choose k constraints depending on the problem that you are trying to solve. Most problems solved with n choose k have symmetric constraints, which is where the constraints uh, look uh, similar in the form that in the in the way that the capital K, uh, the desired number, the desired cardinality of true variables is the same, just the variables themselves are different. The n uh, n set, uh, that is the first uh, uh, first parameter in the n choose K paradigm, it uh, it has the same cardinality of elements, but the elements themselves are different. So like A, B, B, C, D, D, like uh, A one times B two times C one times D two times, right? Uh, minimum vertex cover has uh, constraints to the order of V plus E, but neglecting symmetric constraints, like treating symmetric constraints under the same class, it has only two, which we have already seen. Right? So uh, this is the comparison of complexities that we kind of uh, analyze the problems for. So for exact cover and the minimum cover, uh, the number of non-symmetric constraint and this is the class of non-symmetric constraints to be exact so uh, from all the constraints that exact cover and minimum cover needs for uh, for a graph of size n uh, there are uh, there are non-symmetric constraints like mutually non-symmetric constraints of the order n uh, and for all other problems like minimum vertex cover mac mac color clique cover they are either constant uh, it is important to note that none of them are like squared or exponential. So it is still good. Uh, as compared to cubo constraints, uh, where we have uh, quadratic uh, complexities for the terms involved. And all of them need to have, uh, all of them, for all of them, you need to formulate a different set of, uh, a different set of coefficients. So, what is the experimental setup here? So problems run primarily on quantum computers. So we have the 5,000 qubit, 5,000 plus qubit D-wave advantage 4.1 and uh, 65 qubit IBM Q Brooklyn. Solutions evaluated by comparing with the Z3 solver. Uh, the Z3 solver is also a cubo solver. So we put the solutions into three categories like optimal, suboptimal and incorrect. For optimal problems, uh, Maximum number of soft constraints possible is satisfied, so all of them. For suboptimal problems, fewer soft constraints are satisfied, and all hard constraints are satisfied. And for incorrect, uh, incorrect solutions, at least one hard constraint is broken. Uh, so here are the results from D-Wave. Uh, each experiment is run a hundred times. This is kind of the annealing setup. Uh, we run each experiment a hundred times, and from those hundred runs, we uh, we consider the solution to be as the one with the minimum energy uh, as it settles, right? Uh, higher percentage of optimal results is better from the 100 runs. So you can see that uh, uh, hard and so the problems for which hard and soft constraints are combined uh, generally perform slightly worse, right? For minimum set and exact set, problem they perform very poorly because they have complicated constraints as seen in the table a couple slides back so they have con uh, non-symmetric constraints to the order of n both of these class of problems and map color is 
interesting in the sense that it is solvable with more than 250 qubits. So the reason for this is for map color problems, uh, there is, uh, we choose a specific uh, problem encoding uh, that uh, helps with uh, creating more uh, symmetric constraints in map color. Map color. So for the IBM, uh, IBM circuits, uh, we compare the depth and the optimality. Uh, so X, uh, X indicate non-optimal result. Uh, and for IBM, uh, IBM quantum jobs, each job was run only once. But for QAOA circuits, uh, each job in turn, uh, in turn submits 35 to 45 circuits. And each of the circuit is run with 4,000 shots. Uh, deep circuits perform poorly. Uh, and circuit depth and complex constraint matters more than hard versus soft constraint. So here we see that while uh, problems with soft constraints generally perform slightly worse, but it is overshadowed by uh, circuit depths and complex constraints if your problem has one. Uh, another interesting thing to note here is uh, for the max cut problem, we kind of see an unoptimal solution at around 170. 169 and above that we still see uh, optimal solutions again so this is uh, this is an effect of uh, choosing uh, this is an effect of how the scaling factor for these problems work and for for edge uh, for vertex for vertex scaling we start with a clique and then scale it by adding a three clique of uh, three clique and merging it with the graph. Right. For some uh, for some topologies, uh, uh, the number of edges chosen for the particular topology kind of requires more constraints, and that is that that was observed in uh, the point one seventy in the max cut problem. So, number of constraints is often related to circuit depth for each of the problems that I've mentioned. So as the number of constraint increases, the circuit depth also increases. Uh, large constraints increase depth more. So for three satisfiability, satisfiability problem, since it is, a, it is a very generic problem where we have like this uh, conjunctions of, uh, conjunctions of uh, binary equations with the three variables, uh, at most three variables each. And minimum vertex cover has small kind of simple constraints. Uh, qubit connectivity is related to the uh, related to the results presented. Larger constraints means more swap gates are needed for uh, the cubo equation to map onto the uh, map onto the layout. So, n choose k kind of uh, sits squarely in the niche where annealing is good. And this kind of, uh, this is the kind of result that is expected because annealing problem uh, already is for a specific class of problems. And when we share and choose K as, uh, as a tool that works in, uh, works in the class of problems that can be solved by both uh, uh, circuit devices and annealing devices, annealing devices will perform better because they are specialized. Uh, we plan to expand, uh, expand the types of problem we can run. Uh, QAOA is slow on circuit based machines. Uh, and also for, uh, for the formulation of the cubo equation from uh, formulation of the cubo equation, uh, uh, N choose K uh, is kind of looking into potential optimizations where uh, symmetric circuit, uh, uh, symmetric uh, constraint uh, cube optimizations could be uh, memoized and then be used again. So annealing and circuit model quantum computers have different strengths and weaknesses. Uh, n choose k is a step in bridging the gap between gate based and annealing machines. And choose k makes it feasible for non-quantum programmers like naive programmers to solve a variety of problems on quantum hardware, uh, given that they know the paradigm they're working in. We plan to expand it or create similar domain-specific languages which can run problems annealing cannot.
uh, and choose k can be found at this repository. So for the Python implementation, you can refer to this repository if you want. Okay. So any questions that I could address right now? Okay, so given that you were able to put these X's on there indicating what was an a optimal and suboptimal solution, mm -hmm. my question is, for this particular problem, what do you need in terms of the hardware in order to have problems where you couldn't otherwise verify the answer? I would say a cubo solver, right? Oh, or am I? Well, I'm, I'm saying hardware, question. right? Because you 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 showed us these nice graphs of uh, the D-wave annealer, which has quite a large number of qubits, well, mm -hmm. quote qubits in it. So my question more is either with that or the gate-based machine, what do you need in order for this to solve a useful problem? Mm. I am not quite sure about that. This is maybe a somewhat related question, but mm -hmm. you sort of highlighted that the D-Wave machine could go up to 4,000 or so, mm -hmm. um, but you you sort of maxed out at around 250, and um, you know, did you try going higher, and it's just that you never found, you know, it was so, always suboptimal or incorrect? No, uh, that is a good question. So for the problems that are discussed here, right? We wanted to kind of uh, maintain the graphs uh, to be comparable, right? Which is why it maxes out at 250 and uh, 300 qubits, because for some of the graphs, uh, as we scale with vertexes and edges, uh, uh, that is the maximum that we could uh, kind of go with all the other graphs that are, uh, that are being discussed. And I guess uh, getting more directly to Ian's question, how far out to the right beyond um, 250 to 300, and, you know, a larger graph therefore, would you have to go before you can't solve this on uh, a classical simulation? On a classical simulation? Uh, no, I'm not sure. Okay. No. Any other questions? All right, well, let's all thank the speaker again. Be sure to check out my poster at 4 p.m. on Kisdax. That is kind of my work. But yeah, thank you. <laughs>